Do you want to feel happier? Do you want to feel more radiant and more alive? To go beyond alive and to feel truly like you are thriving? That's what I'm here for. Helping you find that best you that you know is in there. It is. And you can start accessing that you today. It's possible. If you're ready for a shortcut to just that, let's work together. Reach out and let's work one-on-one -on -one to transform you and your life into happy, into thriving. Reach out to me and book a quick call. It's in the show notes and let's get you there. Are you really committed and ready? Let's do it. I'm the happiest I've ever been thanks to all the practices I've made a part of my life. You can be too. It's here for you. You can also access my course, The Youthfulness Hack, which is all about feeling good and getting radiant and all the things I do concentrated in one spot. Go there today and use code AMY15 for 15% off right now, only for listeners of this show. And if you are ready to truly have accountability and live happy, book a call with me today. The world needs your best. Commit and show up. Let's do this. Hello and welcome to the Amy Edwards Show. I'm your host, Amy Edwards, and we are here about living our best life right now, today. Elevating in every way that we can using simple tools like mindset, habits, and all the rest of it. And today, our voices, which you know is one of my very, very favorites yeah. with our Rockstar cast. I am so excited that you are here this week because every time you show up for these, you're doing something for yourself. We all are. We all are. And that's part of why I love doing this so much because it really truly enriches my life and I get to learn from experts like today's guest. I get to, you know, feel so connected to you and I'm just so happy to be here. So thank you for being here. Uh, business up top, check out my courses. The Youthfulness Hack is out. There's a special discount, Amy 15 for 15% off for listeners of this show. And it's all available, including the free course, Ageless Mindset. Uh, in my info page, which is amyedwards.info. Super easy to find, super easy to access all the shows and any other content and some free resources as well. So I am so thrilled that you are here. Thank you for being here today. And thank you to our fabulous guest, Vasavi Kumar, the author of <laughs> Say It Out Loud. Wow. Woo, we have a hot off the presses, yes. hot off the postal service uh, copy right here. It is beautiful. I love the color. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. How are you feeling? Uh, <laughs> overwhelmed? Are you overwhelmed? Are you tripping a little bit? Is it like, am I living in a dream? Like, what is it? I'm tired. I'm going to be honest. I'm tired. I want you to be honest. I'm tired. I am excited. I am uh, slightly nervous. I am overwhelmed. I'm a little burnt out. I am ready for a nap. Um, and it's like, I've poured everything into this. You know, it's been like a two year process. And so when I got the book, um, like and I, when did it start? This started, this journey started December of 2020. That's more than two years. Yeah. That's two and a half. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Two and a half years. Boy, that's a long, that's a lot. Yeah. No, I hear you. And then you were saying, sorry. Yeah. And then I was just saying, you know, when I got the book in the mail for the first time last week and I opened it up, it was, uh, I wasn't excited. I wasn't like, I was slightly nervous, but I was, when I saw the actual book, I was more still. I don't know if that happened when you That's gave birth. Like when you gave birth, <laughs> like I'm just wondering, like, you know, you've been carrying this baby for nine months. You weren't surprised when the baby came out. You, That's right. So it's like, it was weird because when the book came to me, I was like, okay, why am I feeling this way? We knew this day was going to happen. And I was like, I think it might just be, you know, in rehab, we learn one day at a time, right? That's how we mm -hmm. get. That's how we stay sober. We take it one minute at a time, one day at a time. And so I apply that to even this. So when the book came out, it wasn't some big surprise for me. It's like, we'd been doing it. Right. We'd been doing it every day. We'd Anticlimactic. I believe yeah. they call that in book speak. Yeah. Book speak. <laughs> exactly. So I was just, I was, I was still when I, when I got the, when I actually got my hands on the book. I wonder what that is. I think that might just be, I think all the emotions that I was experiencing throughout, uh, it was a lot. And then when, it, when the book actually came, like I just released complete control, right? Because once the book is sent off to the printer, it's done. Like we go right. back and forth with our edits. And when the book is off to the printer, it's off to the printer. And so at that point, it's like, I'm done. Yeah. There's nothing more for me to control. And so there was really no emotion around it once I actually got my 
hands That's on the That's weird. I would but think you'd like cry. No, I I was just I cried throughout the process. I cried throughout writing the book. You're all cried out. Yeah, I'm all cried out. I'm all I'm just like I'm happy I'm happy to be here, y'all. I'm I'm like so excited for people to learn how to talk to themselves, and I'm like it's out. That's it. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you so much. You did it. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. And then, you know, then you start looking ahead to the next one. And, you know, I think it is different than have a baby, having a baby because the creative process, like, kind of finishes. Like you're saying, like, when it's done. Like, mm-hmm. I felt like that about, like, albums I've created or books, mm-hmm. whatever. And you sort of, like, hit a point where you're like, now this creative thing that I've done is here into the world for others. You mm-hmm. know, when you have a baby, it's more like, uh-oh, now I'm a mom, you yeah. know? And now you're, like, in it for life. Your life just changes. Mm-hmm. For this, it's more stepping into that fullness of the creative process, I think. And it's sort of like it's not mine anymore. I really appreciate you saying that. I was just having this conversation with another friend. I go, I really love the process of creating. Like I love the good. We should. We should. Like I Mm -hmm. love the outlining. I love which stories am I going to use? I love the Google docs. I love the post-its. Like I love everything that helps stuff be created. And then once I'm done, it's like, okay, I'm done. This is not for me. It's for the people, right? Like, even if you read my dedication, do you know Mm -hmm. when I originally wrote my dedication, it first said to my therapist, Virginia, my first ever therapist Mm -hmm. at the age of 12, Virginia, I first dedicated the book to her, like as I was writing it. And I had said, to my therapist, Virginia, thank you for giving me a safe space to say it out loud. And then as we were going through the edits back and forth, like right before this book was ready to go to printer, I changed the dedication to all those who suffer in silence. May May this this book book bring you relief. relief. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, because I realized like this is not about me. I I, I actually put my therapist in the acknowledgement section. Mm -hmm. I put my late uncle in the acknowledgement section, which is why I- I like that. Yeah. It's really not about you because no. when you're truly creative, creating something, you just have to let it go mm-hmm. and then trust that it's going to reach whoever it needs to reach. Yeah. And that, that, that's a really cool yeah. thing. Have you talked much about that lately? I mean, like, that's really cool. Well, I've been saying this inside of my community to my community members. It's like, yeah. y'all, when you put it out there, like, yes, you are bringing all the parts of you to this thing that you're trying to create. But at the end of the day, it's not about you. Like, Mm -hmm. it's really not, it's, you are the source, you are the channel, you are the one doing it, but it's, you're downloading a lot and that requires you having a connection with your spirit. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like once it's out in the world, it's not about you. It's Mm -hmm. like, it's, it's art, you know, that's like any, with any piece of art, you know, you can look at it and say, oh, I don't like that, but then it's not for you. Yeah. But somebody else can look at, you know, your, your piece of art and say, I love that. And that's, Mm -hmm. I don't have, um, I don't have attachment either way, you know? I think the similarity to that with having a baby is like, you know, I have a a daughter who's turning 18 Mm -hmm. right now, about Mm -hmm. to graduate and all that. And Mm -hmm. that is like it. Like, you're like, well, I did what I could. And then it's like, I've created this other human and... Yeah. (laughs) Let's hope. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and there's just like, at a certain point, you're just like, okay. And so that is a similarity Mm -hmm. too. So, uh, of course, this is super aligned with, you know, my own feelings about speaking things out loud. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that. Yep. If anybody wants to tune into our first episode, yeah. you're officially a friend of the show you're now, boss. Thanks. Like, no, I love it's your that second for time. us. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I that. mean, duh. I can just hold your foot this entire episode. <laughs> you sure can. Yeah, there it no is, everybody. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I probably need a pedicure, but that's um, okay. <laughs> say that out loud. Uh, so I didn't get through the entire book, but I got through most of it and mm-hmm. I really enjoyed so much about it. But the first question I wanted to ask you yeah. was which you mentioned when we sat down is that you just re- finished recording your audiobook. Yeah. So you just said this entire book out loud. I did. What hit you? Were you taking your own advice? Like how did you feel in those moments? I realized I needed to <laughs> I realized I needed to talk to myself out loud more. I'm like I've been writing oh, about shit. I'd already been like here's the thing. I've talked out loud to myself pretty much my whole life. And then I started writing this book and then it just became about the reader. Like, okay, I need Mm -hmm. to have great practices for them. I need to have great prompts for them. And then I'm like, as I was doing the audio book, I was like, this is really good. Why am I not, why am I not asking myself these questions? So I really realized that I have to revisit my own prompts and I have to keep talking to myself out loud. At some point, like as I was creating it, I stopped talking out loud. Like I still talk to myself, Mm -hmm. just not as much out loud. And I realized 
I need to start doing that again. Ooh, yeah, because it's a practice. Yeah, it's a and practice. And then you, I mean, we come and go in our practices. Yeah, it's okay. But I like the concreteness of it, like because you do have practices in here. You have um, not only prompts and practices, but you have promises. Yeah. Which I really, really love. I'm gonna read one that I pulled because I really liked it. Thank you. Um, I like I like concrete stuff. So yeah. I mean, I'm such a Virgo, yeah. and I'm like super pragmatic. So I'm like, okay, what can we say out loud? Yeah. How can we? Wait, well, hey, put it into practice. Give me a checklist. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so let's see this one, well, this one I flipped open to is from no chapter seven. The one I found was from chapter five and it said, promise yourself that no matter how big or intense the feeling that arises, you'll be kind, empathetic, and patient with yourself. Commit to being patient instead of trying to rush through your feelings and making it a regular practice to check in with yourself out loud by asking with kindness, what am I feeling in this moment? And and then you went on to say the way to build trust and confidence confidence in yourself is to ask for what you need, listen, and then put in the effort to give that to yourself. You're worth making the effort for no matter how large or small the thing you need mm -hmm. may be. And just how cool that it has promises in there. I don't know if you remember this or not. You might've seen it on my Instagram, but mm -hmm. on my 50th birthday, I mm -hmm. like made vows to myself. And I think that sometimes we don't either, we make promises and we break them. Mm -hmm you know, and we just kind of blow them off. Then we're deteriorating our own trust mm -hmm. or we don't even bother to make the promises. Mm -hmm. So this is cool. I thought, yeah. What do you, were you already making promises to yourself? Like, so the way that I shaped the, at the end of every chapter, I actually had this like free challenge that I did a year ago, helping people feel more confident, um, confident and comfortable doing IG lives, right? So I did this for a seven day challenge called show up and shine challenge. And in that challenge, this is even before I started writing the book. Uh, no, this challenge was like a year ago, but I hadn't started like doing the exercises yet. That, oh, okay. That's what it was. Okay. So in this challenge, I was like, okay, I want to give everyone a prompt, a prompt, um, a prompt, a practice and a promise. So the prompt is the thing that's going to help you become aware about mm -hmm. how you're speaking to yourself or how you treat yourself. The practice is the actual verbal practice where I ask you, I give you a prompt and you have to ask that to yourself out loud and respond. Now the promise is because I have broken many promises to myself. And so I knew for me Who that- Who hasn't? Okay. I mean, like big, small, all- Seriously. I mean, so many times. So I was like, no, we need to have, <laughs> I wanted to have something about commitment in there. Like I wanted it to be a, uh, like a commitment that you make to yourself. And the, and the one specifically that you read about big emotions, um, I put that in there because I used to hurt myself when I had big emotions, you know, mm -hmm. I would numb, I would isolate, not isolate in a healthy way. You know what I mean? Like, like even before I came here, I was like, Amy, I want to isolate. I just want to go home and have solitude, but I would isolate in a way that wasn't very healthy for me. So I said at the end of every, how do we solidify all these prompts and practices is okay. Make a commitment to yourself in each chapter with this part of yourself. How are you going to be with this part of yourself? How are you going to be? So we're yeah. just, do you, t do you recommend people taking that further? Like writing it on a sticky note or like, how do you remember all your promises? I think it would, I <laughs> what think, do you do? Well, I would say as someone who's practical like you and also very pragmatic, if you need to see it, have it somewhere, like have it on I your, I have mine written down, Yeah, like in this, in my little daily planner and like this oh, notebook. And so I, I try to read through it every day, but I mean, they're in here. Yeah. Like, yeah. So what I would do, if you are a visual person, which you clearly are, I if guess. you're a visual person, take what you're already doing, right? You're already writing stuff down you have your cool you know purple color put them around the house you know <laughs> put them on your on your mirror in the bathroom and say them out loud like if you need yeah. to see it and then say it then do that yeah I think I have a lot on my mirror that I don't always say out loud but I'm pretty good about yeah. it is your shower time like a pretty good talk, yes. talk out loud time so have I, we talked about this I no. think I don't wait did we talk about know. this on Amazon I bought these shower notes oh my did god I'm making like a, a subscription box with speak as one oh my god. mental health and we're putting shower affirmation cards in there oh my god that's like a game changer because, I'm so excited yeah, about them because when you put when you're in the shower mm -hmm. right like that's the that's the best time to create that's the best time to sort something out that's the best time to just <laughs> You know, anytime well, I you don't have distractions, I mean, let's be real. And it's beautiful to just feel the water. So I think that's awesome. I bought these uh, shower notes, which is basically a sticky, blank, waterproof pad with a mm -hmm. like, waterproof pencil. I don't know how any of it works, but I will write stuff. Like if I'm feeling some sort of way, I need to like hear a message from God. And I'm like, okay, what would God say to me right now in this moment? And so I write that and I just stare at that and I say it out loud while I'm showering. What would God say to me right now? Yeah. And so what I have up there right now in my shower, it says, trust me, Vasavi, I've been with you every step of the way. Why would I leave you now? Oh my God. That's about mm -hmm. to make me cry. Yeah. That's so good. 
Mm-hmm. What would God say to me right now? Yeah. Like, how powerful is that? Because then who do you have to tap into, <laughs> right? If you wanted to ask yourself, what would God say to me? Who would you need to be to access that part of you? Yeah. We would need to be all loving, all kind, non, not judgmental, not shamey, like not an ounce. And that doesn't mean we patronize and coddle. Like I talk about in my book being, having gentle firmness. My voice of God is gentle and firm. Yeah. Because firm, you know, I don't want to be let off the hook. You know, being kind doesn't mean coddling me and enabling me. It means being firm, but being gentle. Like, you know what you need to yeah. do. Yeah. You know what you need to do. I love you, but mm-hmm. you know what you need to do. And it's just more like, not where a- can you be more honest? Yeah. Where can you step up more? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the questions in your book, you were, I think it was on the chapter where you're talking about intuition and you were like asking different questions, but you, you were like, don't be so specific. Instead, ask bigger questions. Like, how can I show up as my best self right now? Mm-hmm. Like, it would be like that kind of thing. Like God would say, yeah what would you do if you were your best self right now? Yeah, I would, I I mean, it would always be for me to tap back into kindness for myself and kindness for the other person. I can be really hard on myself. And so that can come out with other people, not as much with other people, more with myself. My issue has always been that I've hurt myself more than I've hurt other people with how I speak to myself. I mean, I'm good with other people. And if I'm not, I'll clean it up immediately. Like if I say something in a way like, and I, you know, I try to be very mindful of how I say things, but let's just say I have a moment. I will clean that up right away. Sorry, I keep, I keep up. Okay. Snapping my fingers. Snap away. We keep having so, but it's with myself that I've had to be kinder. I'm super hard on myself. In fact, Me I, too. I was, yeah, I was just sharing this. I go, you know, I'm much better now. Much better. Much better yeah. now. And here's what I'm realizing. You know, as a kid, I was not celebrated for being Vasavi. I was, uh, I was, I was criticized a lot as a kid. Like who I be was just bad. I was just bad. Right. I, I, I was not a bad kid, but I was made to feel like everything I did, if it wasn't according to the way it should be done, I was bad. And so I just grew up feeling like I am a bad person. And then I started to do things that were bad for me. I don't want to say I did yeah, bad. just fulfilling that. Yeah, I was just like, fulfilling okay. that. So now I'm in this place where it feels hella weird because people are <laughs> celebrating me now. People are respecting me. People are celebrating me. People are praising me. And I don't know how to handle all that. Oh shit. Watch out. Right. Yeah. Because I am so used to being told everything that is wrong about me, yeah. not only from the outside world, you know, my own, you know, my own at home growing up, but me to myself. Cause we There's just a whole bunch of worthiness wrapped up. In so there. this is literally like in real time. Today's May 1st. I, I have just, just uncovering this. I go, Oh, this is why I feel so freaking uncomfortable. I don't feel grounded because I am not used to being looked at in such a positive light. I'm looked at being, I'm used to being looked at through the lens of scrutiny my whole life. Oh my God, that's your next book. <laughs> that's your next We're, book. Worthiness. For worthiness. Like yeah. in all this. Yeah. Worthiness. I mean, really, because that's, that's the thing too. I mean, you know, I live with somebody who's been through rehab and stuff, so mm-hmm. I have a, a close look at it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, anytime that we're doing things that are detrimental to us, there's mm-hmm. this worthiness piece underneath it. And like, it starts with our self-talk, mm-hmm. but then, okay, we tackled that. Okay, next step, we're actually in a good place where other people yeah. are speaking nicely to us. Yeah. Now, how do we overcome those patterns and, and reverting back to like, oh, fuck, if they only knew. Or, oh, fuck, uh, how do I handle this, you it, know? Yeah, and so I'm trying to be mindful not to... Uh, I don't want to call it self-sabotage, but in a way it's like protect myself, you know, from feeling this much praise. Like, whoa, if you, it's almost, it's also like how I feel about love. We've talked about this, like in romantic relationships. Mm-hmm. Am I allowed, am I, am I open to having a man really see me, not me distract him, not me perform for him and be like my bright shining star that I was for my dad. I was my dad's happy little girl. Very different than a man seeing me, right? I don't actually let men see me and be with me because I don't know what that feels like. I'm used to performing and getting love that way. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like the same thing. It's like being used to this feeling like, oh, wow, people are looking at me in this way. That's kind of nice. And I don't I, I got to start seeing myself through these eyes because I'm not used to this. I know. I'm not. Is there much about receiving in here? Is it? I mean, I guess it is essentially receiving because you're saying it and you're hearing it. So you are training yourself to receive nice things. The voice that I've been working on is the part of me that is like so proud of me, you know, and not just like, Oh, you wrote a book. I mean, yes, you wrote a book, but it's like who I had to be, who I had to become 
what I had to overcome to write the book. So I'm trying to access that. I'm, 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 I'm letting that part of me uh, speak to me. And so I'm learning to receive from that part of me. Like, yes, it's, it would, it's awesome that my friends, my, my colleagues, people on social media think my book is great, but like, it doesn't make a difference if I don't truly feel it. You know what I mean? Damn like, right. Yeah, like I all the accolade, like that's why like people really struggle with mental health, especially people who um, are, you know, celebrities, famous really out there. They've accomplished a lot. They've accomplished it out there, but inside it doesn't match up with how they're feeling and being received. And I don't want that. No. I don't want that. Like, I, I, I want to be just as proud of myself and see myself through the eyes of like how everyone else sees me. Like I need to feel that. So that's what I'm working on. And I'm letting her speak to me. So in a way I am receiving. So what she's saying. She's saying to me, oh my God, girl. <laughs> like, okay. So I actually had this moment. Listen to this. I was in the, um, I was in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. uh, talking to, to myself in the mirror, which I recommend in the book to please face yourself. You know this. Big fan of mirror practice, everybody. Okay, so I had this moment, Amy, where I was like, you know, just, I was putting on like my vitamin C serum. I was putting on my face oil and I was like, Very I had nice. my hair back. Skin looks fabulous. Th thank you so much. Yes. I was looking at myself and then I said back to me, but it wasn't me. It was a different part of me that spoke back to me in the mirror. It was kind of like in the show um, Insecure. Did you ever see Insecure with I Issa did, but I don't remember which part. She what? always talks back to herself in the mirror, but it's like different parts of her talking uh -huh. back. So this part of me said in the mirror, Basabi, you have no idea what's about to be opened up for you. You have no idea what's in store. Get ready. And it was like, stay ready. Stay grounded. Be proud of yourself. It's just going to keep getting better. And I heard that voice say to me, and I was like, okay. You're like, who said that? Okay, who said that? Okay, okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll stay ready. So I am, I am, I have historically protected myself from feeling really good by doing uh, shitty things towards myself or uh, not being very kind or just kind of undermining my success just a little bit. I'm really good at undermining it. Just, and that feels good? Is that what you're saying? It's, it, it's familiar. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a familiar pain for me, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm really, I'm work, I'm breaking out of not doing that to myself, you know, because I always say new level, new devil. This is a new level for me, Ooh. right? Yeah. So the new devil for me is you really that good. You think it's really that good. Like it's like a naggy voice in my head. It's like, okay, fine. You want me to humble myself once again? And it's like, it reminds me of love my mother, but she, she's always been the one to make sure you know, don't get too big for your britches. She's always like, so she'll always try to undermine me just a little bit. I know she's just trying to do what she thinks her job is as a mom, but that's the voice in my head that I'm, I'm working through. Like, Vasavi, you don't have to undermine your success. You did this, you know? I do know. Yeah. You've said that really well. Good for you. Yeah. I, I like this. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm leveling up and I haven't heard that. And, uh, you know, there's some things coming out. It's like growth phase mm -hmm. means shit comes out. And then old ways just keep bursting out that you've got to, like, break the patterns of. A lot of my insecurities are coming out. A lot of Does my this surprise you? The A little? Like, after doing this? Like, are you like, oh, I, I thought I might have had that tackled. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, oh, man, it's, um, <clears throat> the thing that's surprising is that... Like it's, it's, it feels even bigger. Like, oh, it scares me even more now for some reason. Like, like for example, my, my fear that I sometimes have is people are going to think, oh, you think you're better than us now. I don't ever want anyone to think that. I even, I even write about that in my book mm -hmm. in, in, in second grade. I, was, I, I won this contest and people and all the kids in school, they're all second graders. They're like, you think you're better than us now. Oh, sure. I so, know what you're talking so about. So now I have this. Are people going to think, I think I'm better than them because I don't think I'm better than you. In fact, I'm probably worse than you because my brain is so effing crazy. Like, I don't think I'm better than you. I actually think I'm more fucked up than you. So trust me, there is no superiority complex going on here. Like, I would, and that's what's so funny to me. It's like, that's what's coming up for me. People are going to think I think I'm better than them. It's like, no, if you only were inside my brain, I do not think I'm better. But that is coming up for me. Yeah, yeah. good. You know what? This is, I think this is good. And I think it's good that we're talking about yeah. it. Because, um, have you read Existential Kink? Oh, why does that uh, book sound familiar? I haven't, though. It's good. Oh, yeah. But she talks a lot about how in the past your shirt looks Okay, I know. Oh, I, I don't know if I was sweating. I sweat on every... You're not. Sorry, I have to turn off the AC. Okay, in here that's, okay, that's okay. That's, you know, you record yeah. in yeah. studios yes. where you're like, well. Guess um, we're going to be sweating. <laughs> yeah, you okay. know what? I, you're in the hot seat. Yeah, no. literally. Um, no, but she just talks about like how we do enjoy those things. They're mm -hmm. like familiar, but we kind of get off on it. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like uncomfortable, but at the same time, you're like, okay, well, 
maybe if I just shine the light on it, then yeah, then it loses its power over me. I feel it's a it's a re, it's a recurring thing for me. Like every it's it shows up. I had a friend call me the other day, and I got the sense that maybe she was a little upset that we hadn't spoken in a while. But I, and so I noticed myself wanting to over explain. Oh, dude, totally. Yeah. And, totally. and be like, hey, Feel I love that. you. I've just been really busy. And I like kind of started to, Amy. I'm not going to lie. I did. I started, I was like, hey, <laughs> love you. And then I said, you know, I just, I could not stop myself from over explaining because I am fueled by the fear that other people are going to misunderstand me and they're going to think you think you're better than us. And I'm like, that, that has been in me since I was in second grade. Like, that's why I write about it because I know so many women. Um, they dumb themselves down, they water, the, you know, themselves down. They don't allow themselves to shine as bright because, you know, maybe they were, um, picked on or maybe people did say to them, oh, you think you're better than us. So we think, oh, we can't shine too bright. We can't be too good looking. We can't be too finan- uh, you know, f- financially successful because you might be insecure if, if I outshine you. And that's, that's what I'm working through in this season. I mean, you can think I am awesome and yeah, I'm not better than you. There, yeah. There's no part of me that thinks <laughs> so, so it, those can coexist. Li- like I said, it's like, I don't think I'm better. I think I'm worse. <laughs> That's why I laugh about it. It's like, there's no such like, yeah, there's, there's, there's none of that, but it does but you don't up. really think you're worse. Don't you think like we are equals? So I want to share something that I read and that's why I really resonated with. It. So Russell Brand wrote his book on recovery. He wrote his, and I, I remember reading that in rehab. The 12 steps too that yes. he adapted, which yes. you kind of, you talked about how you kind of created your own, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So nine, yeah. 12 steps. He's got 12. He said this in an interview. <clears throat> and so I want to quote him because he's the one who said this. He said, I don't actually think I'm better than you. I know I'm worse because I know the depths of where my brain can go. Like I understand people and their shadows and their dark side and their insecurities because I've spent a lot of time with mine. Like I know how, I know where my mind can go. I know where my mind can go. It can go to some pretty dark places. And so I understand people and how they may feel. And so I just got to make sure I don't project that or assume that someone may be thinking that, but... That's where I um, heard that from when he said that. He's like, I don't think I'm better. I actually think I'm worse because my brain has um, formed in a way that I can go to these places in my mind that most people cannot. That's probably why you're good at what this book is all about. Talking to the different parts of you. You know, like there's, there's, I, (coughs) I don't ever want to think, oh, I, I know myself completely and the work is done. No. I mean, we are constantly, like I said, new level, new devil, but there are some things in there that I've written. And it's like, man, I really have spent a lot of time inside my brain. Like my, yeah. yeah. One of the things you talked about too, like this kind of reminds me of is like, you talk about being curious about the different parts of yourself, but then you also mentioned that there are voices that are not yours. Yeah. So is it, is it a part of yourself that you've just sort of like taken on? And then, you know, mm-hmm. would you, would you say that? Yeah. You have internalized other people's voices. So oh, yeah, you've yeah, yeah. internalized it. Mm-hmm. So you may have heard something and this could be from society, our parents, media, siblings, a- anyone, right? Like anything like, Oh my God, anyone. It's important to look at like, why am I doing this? Where mm-hmm. do I, like even, even the way I've run my business for 10 years, right? Even now I'm like, who said that a sales page has to look this way? Who says that email marketing has to look this way? Like, even when it comes down to business, I'm like, who taught me that it has to be this way? Like, wh- why am I not listening to my own creative spirit? Mm-hmm. Right? So even in our business, even how we do things, we can ask ourselves, where did I learn this from? Why am I doing it this way? You know, and it's not to blame. It's just to distinguish, is this the way I want to do it? Or is this the way that I think I should based on the voices that yeah, have? Like yeah, like supposed to. Yeah. And I've been told, I've been taught. And so now that's what I feel like I have to do. Yeah. And then when it doesn't resonate with your soul. That's what I talk about in chapter uh, two, admit it out loud. You have to admit Mm -hmm. your powerlessness and you have to admit where am I still doing things in my life as I should be doing it? Who in my life am I still giving away my power to? There are certain Mm -hmm. questions that I say, what are things that I'm doing because I have to do, not because I actually want to do. Now, obviously this does not mean give up all your responsibilities, but it is really important to look at what are we doing because we think we have to versus what we actually want to do. And so, you know, those are just some of the questions that I was asking in that chapter. About. I like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I'm looking at this chapter, own your power and be yeah. true to yourself. Cause you have these like power leakages, right? In yes. Here? Yes. I like that. Power yeah. There are leakages. different ways to look at where we're leaking our power. I believe Dude, I- we give our power away all the time. Yeah. It's like, Oh, even when I get like all hooked on something like irritated, I'm like, Oh, Loop. there went my power. I've just yep. given it all over to X. Yes. 
<sighs> ruminating. R- oh, um, you know, master we, ruminator. Talked about I'm ruminating. a master ruminator. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Let's talk more about the book. Um, let's see. I talked about highest self. I, I wanted to talk, you've got, uh, a, a whole thing about flaws. Yes. I wanted to ask like flaws versus seeing them as not flaws. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so like even like just gaining compassion, like what are you saying to yourself when you gain compassion towards yourself for seeing them as flaws, you know? And mm-hmm. you're like, no, you know what? You're okay just as you are. Yeah. It's not a flaw. So when I, okay. So <laughs> let, let me look at a flaw of mine that I've typically thought was, uh, was a bad thing. Like I jokingly say this, like I am the laziest bitch alive. I, I, I'm a Taurus. I can, I will plant my ass on a sofa and just sit. When is your birthday? May 18th. It's two days oh. after the book comes out. Yeah. Oh, shit. Hashtag um, God moment. Did not plan that. But the book, my, my book comes out two days before my 41st birthday. Nah. Yeah. That's so ex- well, okay. First, you just said a flaw that I thought was a bad thing. So, are you using the word flaw without bad or good? Without bad or good? Yeah, it's not a. Ba- it's just it is what it is. Like for me, I used to think being lazy. I thought the word flaw meant like, but but bad. Does it, but does it have to be? Does a flaw have to be bad? Like that's that's the thing that I was questioning as I was writing. I was like, own your flaws. So I used. The- I, I'm about to look up the word flaw. Yeah. I don't know. Go ahead. Keep talking. I, I, I used the example of that last scene from Eight Mile with Eminem when he's duking it out, rapping it out with okay. B-Rabbit. Well, well, B-Rabbit is his name. And then he's doing the rap battle with Papa Duck. And so what? how Eminem ends up winning that rap battle is by saying out loud every single one of his flaws. He says, I'm white trash. I live in a trailer park. My mother. I remember that. That is my so favorite good. scene because he took this thing that his competitor that he was battling with Papa Doc was trying to make fun of him and say, like, these are all your flaws. But he owned his flaw, so-called flaws. So yeah. are they really flaws? Or is it, just, it just is what it is. Yeah, I, I did grow up in a white trailer park. My mother was this. And it's like, is it really a flaw? Is it really a bad thing? So that's like, that's what I was saying. Like I used to say I was lazy. That's a flaw, but it's really not. I just know how to relax hard. (laughs) I know how to relax. It's a reframe, honestly. I am great to go on vacation with. I do not have an itinerary. (laughs) I do not have an agenda. I go, what are we doing today? Let's just, let's just go. Like, yes, it's, so it's, 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 it's reframing it. It's reframing it. Looking. It's a thing. It's just a thing. Like, oh, I'm lazy. And why, why, I don't mind using saying that. I, I jokingly say that. I go, I am very lazy. Mm-hmm. I am lazy. And I, I love that part of me. I have a lazy <laughs> part of me that can just chill hard. Yeah. Yes. Well, you're just good at that. I'm, rela- I'm great you're at relaxing. You're just good at relaxing. Yeah. I am too. I'm yeah. great at it. Yeah. I'm really good. And I love it. And I don't even, like, I don't want to consider it a flaw. Like, it said imperfection, you know? But what if we just call it a thing? Or yeah. like, you know imperfection I kind of like better at least because of course it's not perfect you yes know? but then why are we even striving for perfection in the first place no shit and so why we, so I know when I put this chapter in I when I wrote this chapter I was like man I hope people don't start beating themselves up now over these so-called flaws and instead see these parts of yourself that you have typically looked at as a flaw and when you own it and you start to love it it's not it doesn't have like that it it, it doesn't have that hold over you Right? Yeah, like, yeah. oh, this is something I have to hide. So Or, or fix. So or... my biggest flaw, something that I've been very open about, is being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Mm-hmm. When I was first diagnosed 21 years ago, first thing my mother said to me was, don't tell anyone. She said, don't, I mean, I mean, literally we went to... Right. put like, that in the flaw category. Yeah, put that... Zip it. Yeah. And um, <laughs> of course I did not take her advice because it's out in the you? open. You? Really? But you <laughs> talked about it? I said it out loud, so... <laughs> I, um, I, I, I still sometimes, you know, b- because there is so much stigma around it, I don't like really bringing too much attention to it, but here I am now I have, but I used to think it was a flaw. I used to think it made me extremely broken. I, even when I got married, um, at 28 and I didn't want to go through with the wedding, my father said to me, well, if, you know, he goes, and I love my father, but he said, you know, you have bipolar disorder. If, if you don't get married to your husband, who else is going to marry you? So, you know, I went through with that marriage, having that told to me like, well, you have bipolar disorder. Who else is going to marry I mean, you? I found somebody. Might as well. Yeah, yeah you yeah. might as well. So now for me, it's, it's, I really take it as my responsibility to talk about it more, to be more honest about my, my, my brain and how it works. The fact that I'm back on medication. I've been back on medication since April 1st best thing i mean actually today's 30 days since i've been on really meds. i'm on mood stabilizers yes really mm-hmm. and what prompted that you felt like maybe it could be a benefit 
it, my mind was attacking me. Um, no matter how much I do, and I, I, I do a lot, you know, I walk, I work out, I have great boundaries, self-talk, I pray, I have a great relationship with God, I sleep on time, you know, I do all the things. And what I noticed was my mind was constantly attacking me. There's a, it, it, it's actually called intrusive thoughts. So it's just, they're very mm -hmm. intrusive and they're fast and they're loud and they take over. They come and here I am just, I'm, I am peaceful. My current self is very peaceful, but then my mind, there is a part of my brain that has split off that has, that is extremely traumatized. I, I'd call it the bipolar part of my brain that will just try to mess with me. I, it will just, and so it will cause problems. It will cause fights between me and my family. It will cause massive misunderstanding because my brain will convince me this person is out to get you. This person is rejecting you. And it's usually family. It's not like friends, yeah. friends or anything. And I love my mother and I love my sister and my mom is getting older. My dad's getting older. I don't. Mm -hmm. And so I just had a moment and I said, I do the most. <laughs> it shouldn't be this hard to feel this good. You're right. You're right. And there is nothing wrong. And listen, I'm all for the holistic. Absolutely not. No. holistic lifestyle all of that is great mm. but i had to humble myself and be like i have stuff that i want to do in this world and in this lifetime and it is going to be really freaking hard if my mind is constantly attacking me so i'm on the lowest dosage of a mood stabilizer we've gotten my thyroid hormones in check i, I take nice. thyroid meds and i mm -hmm. feel i feel like i have one feel better i feel alive and enlivened from the inside with the thyroid meds and in my brain for the past month with the exception of because I actually chart my mood every day. I, I do like a mood chart, which Interesting. I've, I've been doing that for 20 years. We, it's, really? Yeah, we actually like in the morning, how do you feel? And if, you know, what's your mood then? And during the day and what triggered it? So like, I'm very aware of my triggers, people that I speak to, conversations that I have, things that may set me off. So it, it, I don't avoid anything. I just manage, I manage it. Like I, I, I don't try to not do things if it's relevant in my life, I will do it, but I'm not going to avoid something like, oh, this is going to really set me off. I'm just mindful of it. Like there are places. It's just awareness. Yeah. It's yeah. just awareness. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. Are you ready to up-level your pleasure practice? I have in mind, and the main things that have helped me are the tools that I've found from Wands. Wands creates luxurious products that encourage us all to honor our body, celebrate our sexuality, and live in pleasure with more pleasure all the time. One of my favorites, if you listen to this show, then you probably already know, is the cervix wand. Wands has trademarked their number one best-selling glass pleasure wand. It's for vaginal and anal de-armoring, and it's designed for cervical and G-spot stimulation. And let me tell you, it's incredible. It's helped thousands of women become more connected to their bodies and their pleasure, and supports them to heal pelvic pain through self-yoni massage, and helps awaken more pleasure. Just recently, I've ordered the Venus Wand, another trademarked wand from Wands, and it's designed to activate and awaken the G-spot and more. Also, don't miss one of their new offerings, which are free bleed blankets that can be used as waterproof intimacy blankets. They have a beautiful selection now available. But take a look around at wands.com, that's W-A-A-N-D-S, because they have a huge selection of incredible items like yoni eggs, crystal pleasure wands in amethyst, black obsidian, anything that your heart desires, and so much more. Check them out at wands.com. That's W-A-A-N-D-S dot com. And use my link in the show notes to get 10% off or simply enter my code Amy Edwards at checkout. Again, that's W-A-A-N-D-S wands.com. Y'all, I have started using higher dose products and I am such a fan. You know, I don't put anything on this podcast that I am not 100% completely behind. And I have a special discount code for you for all higher dose products. I'm so excited. If you don't know, Higher Dose is a wellness company. They have wellness tech products, they have tools, they have supplements, and they have body care. They have so many things that are hot right now too that are really biohacking and up-leveling our lives at home, which is really cool. They have an infrared sauna blanket. They have an infrared PEMF mat that I'm so excited to be sharing about soon. One of my favorites though is the red light face mask. It stimulates collagen, it activates glowing skin, reduces fine lines, regenerates cells and it's soft. 
It's not like one of the hard plastic ones. So you can kind of move it around on your body, which I've been doing. And I am seeing amazing results. I am absolutely addicted to it. I use it every single night. And I'm using it in conjunction with one of their other products, the Glow Serum. And I'm very picky about what I put on my skin. And I am loving the Glow Serum. It's specially formulated to plump and hydrate and stimulate radiant skin, which that's the goal. They have a ton of other products too, magnesium ingestibles, magnesium body care, which has a healing oil and a serotonin soak that you can use in your bath, which I've been using too. It boosts your mood, enhances your skin and deepens your detox, gets you calmed down. Anyway, I'm a fan. So I'm so excited to offer you 15% off using my code MAGIC15. Go to the show notes. You can click through on the link right there. Or if you go to Higher Dose, just enter the code MAGIC15 and you'll get 15% off. Higher Dose has been featured in Goop, Glamour, Elle, Vogue, Bazaar, Allure, basically you name it. And there's a reason why. So go check it out. It's at higherdose.com and enter my code MAGIC15 for 15% off. You know, I've been sober for a year now, yes. and but I had some things go on in my life, and it it was like lodged in me. Mm-hmm. It was like this trauma I could feel in my neck mm-hmm. and chest, and I was like, I'm doing all the things. I'm literally, like I yeah. am great, but somehow something was going on mm-hmm. physically with me, yeah. and I was like, this is really frustrating. And it's so frustrating, like you were saying, when you do the things and you're like, what what else you know like and yet i'm still experiencing some level of angst unease yeah yeah and so i microdosed for a month and you know i didn't think that took away from my sobriety at all no. i went ahead and like i just reached out to some friends and i was like it, it came into my world like a couple times and i was like you know what i'm open to it and bijou my friend she helped me and i did it for a month and and it went away, mm. and, you know, and, um, and it just, I, I can still like feel it when it comes back a little and it's very triggering in the way of like anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an anxious like feeling and, um, it takes over. and it's in your physicality. Mm-hmm. And so it's a little different than my mind attacking me, but it's like, almost like my body's not getting the memo. Yeah. So what do I do? And, and I've been open about this, but it's just interesting to just pay attention to these things when you know you're doing like the best for yourself. You yeah. know, you're stepping into your best version. You were doing the things. I mean, granted, maybe you weren't speaking things out loud as much as you had been in the yeah. past, you know, no. yeah. you obviously acknowledged that, uh, at the beginning of this, that you were like, Oh, I can step into more of my practices again. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, maybe that's what this is opening the door to. Maybe you're going to get back on track with that. You get off your meds down the road. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, um, but it's just good. Like th- that you had that awareness and let go of any judgment. I let go of any judgment. <clears throat> and I have to say, I've had an on again, off again relationship with meds. And uh, it's always been, well, I, I will openly say this. When I got diagnosed in uh, 2001, uh, how old? I was 19. So, okay. so whenever that was, I was 19. Mm-hmm. And so I was on a cocktail of medication and I gained 45 pounds. I mean, I've worked my ass off to kind of get back to a, a, a feeling inside of my body where I feel light. I feel great inside my body. And I was very afraid to get back on meds. It took a, a lot of work for me to lose the weight that I'd gained. I was on four to five different medications when I was 19. I went up to a certain size that I'm like, this is not. Dang. Yeah. So 45 pounds within a matter of like three to six months I gained. Yeah. Wow. Because it made me so lethargic and and my appetite was voracious and I just wanted to eat everything and I was young and I didn't know how to manage my own energy and that's what bipolar Mm -hmm. disorder is it is not just a mood issue it's uh it's um an energy management issue you talk a lot about that you talk about how like you feel like you worked through healing a lot of it right uh I can't remember what chapters that ends but yeah um but yeah yeah energy What'd you say? Energy management. Management. Being able to manage my energy. And when I cannot manage my energy, I then go into what they call mania. And if I can't manage my energy, then if I can't manage it and I go high, 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 eventually I'm going to crash. So I have Mm -hmm. these extreme highs and lows. So these days... I'm not, you know, dealing with a lot of bipolar. It's more of midpolar. I'm like trying to just stay in the middle here, you know, so my moods aren't going like this as much. It's like this. But you are managing your energy just by what you said when you showed up, you know, and you're like, I want to isolate, but it's really rest. Yeah. It's rest. It's, that's energy management, you you. know? Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. It's just very intentional solitude. Yes. Intentional solitude or just like time to yourself. I need it. 
I need it. I need it. Mm-hmm. Justin was just gone for like days. And I had one day where I was just like by myself and it was awesome. Good. What'd you yeah. do? Not a lot. Not the best. I spent a lot of time in my robe. I love that. I ended up watching a show. I mean, like, yeah. I, and it was great. When and I, I didn't even like beat myself up about it. You know? We need to learn how to relax hard. Like really <laughs> relax hard. Like it is a whole vibe. I think that's a book title right there. Yeah, relax relax hard. hard. You got to relax hard. Like <laughs> me, make it a vibe. Like I, at night, it's like mood lighting is on. Candles are lit. John Mayer is oh, playing. You you, mm-hmm. It is a whole thing. Like we need to, I need to give myself permission to restore more. Because we do, I mean, you're like this too. We, there's a lot of output. There's mm-hmm. a lot of output. And so the thing that makes me feel relaxed isn't m- doing the most. It's just not doing anything, you know? Yeah, yeah, I do know. And just doing whatever I want. Like even in my stories yesterday, I shared, there was this, uh, <coughs> there was this, um, it's okay. There was this Instagram account and the guy made the most amazing dish. It was, I mean, it was like olive oil, garlic, butter beans, uh, also, also known as Northern beans, cherry tomatoes, basil, red pepper flakes, put mm, a little lemon yes, zest. Yes, yes. And then you, and then oh, just a lemon zest. I'm no, in. Hold on. One more thing. What? Just a dollop of cream cheese. Yeah. Just a dollop of lactose free cream cheese. And you have this, <laughs> you have this creamy butter bean, tomato, cream cheese thing. And I, I put some, you know, lemon zest, little, you know, Pecorino Romano made some beautiful sourdough mm. toast and ate it. And I shared it in my stories and I said, these are the little things that we have to do for ourselves. Don't just scroll and see a great recipe. Go out and make it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like salivating right now thinking about this. Let's dish. go downstairs. Yeah, let's go. Let's go downstairs. <laughs> do I have all that? Yeah. Mm, sort of. Most people do. We could probably do it with chickpeas. But we could probably. 100%. Yeah. It would yeah, be great. I got that. It would be great. <laughs> but my point is, it's like really, it's not just thinking it. It's not just feeling it, but it's also saying it and then doing it. Right. And then actually being the, and you know, that gap between who, where we are, where we want to be is closed by embodiment. Be the person, right? Like, don't just say it, be it. And so for me, it's when I was, you know, talk about acts of self-love and this, it's like, you know, this is an act of self-love. Me making this amazing dish and enjoying the heck out of it. That's an act of self-love. That's embodiment of I love myself. Yes. That is the embodiment of I love myself for me. It may not be for yeah, you, for you. Oh yeah. For yeah. you. Yeah. Yours is going to look different than mine. That's why I want everyone listening. It's like, find your way of loving you. Find the way, like, how do you love you? Because I'm in a season and you know this, you've helped me a lot with this. Like I'm in a season where I know how I, to love myself. I'm still working on being more patient with myself in those very, ext- like, it's very rare when I feel lonely. It's, it's a combination of loneliness and tiredness. It makes me feel like I'm three years old again. And halt, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Halt, hungry. And yes, when I'm basically all three of, all four of those, that's when <laughs> I feel the most vulnerable. And oh, yeah. so I have become better at giving myself what I need. So it's like, I'll make myself a hot chocolate. I'm like, okay, I want a warm drink. Like, and like, how would I mother myself in this moment? You know, how would I dad myself in this moment? How would I be a friend to myself? How would I be a lover to myself in this moment? If I was, if I was in a relationship with a beautiful partner and I was feeling sad, how would I want him to love me? Oh, I'd want him to make me some amazing four sigmatic mushroom hot chocolate. Like that's how I do it. You know, so it, yep. I, I laugh about it, but it's like in those moments, what are we doing to be kinder to ourselves? What is that? What does that action look like? It doesn't always have to be this big, big ass thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Simple. And I remember when in our last episode, we talked about that and dating and you dating yourself, mm-hmm. but those are excellent. Like I guess taking it further questions, like what would I want in this moment? And then giving it to yourself and not being depressed about it. Mm -mm. (laughs) Oh no, I was, no, no, I made the hot chocolate and I was drinking. I was like, this is exactly what I needed. I drank it, brushed my teeth, went to bed. Great. Like it was, it wasn't like feeling sorry for yourself as you're doing it. No, be like, oh my God, this is me loving myself. Anytime I do stuff in a healthy way that I normally would have reached out to an ex or done this, I'm like, yes, you have won today. You have slayed the day, boss. Like anytime I feel sad, lonely, hungry, and I take care of myself through whatever action, for me, that is a win. You have slayed the day. I've slayed the day. I actually have a 23-year-old neighbor who I love, and she literally texts me, and she'll be like, hot girl walk, 8 a.m.? I'm like, yeah, hot girl walk, 8 a.m. So I love it. So she's like, are you ready to slay? I go, ready to slay. So I'll say it slay because I have a neighbor who is 23. She sounds great. She is absolutely wonderful. I mean, I really lucked out having a neighbor like her. We Every morning we wake up. Eight, eight o'clock in the morning, I'll text her. Are you ready? She's like, yes, ready. And it's, it's great. That's awesome. Yeah. She's my walking buddy. And we just yeah. walk in our little, we don't even go outside into the neighborhood. We just, we have a little court. 
<laughs> we just walk circles in the court. Good. It's great. Yeah. What do y'all do? Do you start saying some stuff out loud? We talk. I let her talk a lot. She's she's younger, so I, yeah. I she she looks up to me. So I, but I also really look up to her. She's she's a very old Dude, soul. Dude, there are some wise people With, that are like twenty three, and you're just like, wow. My little cousin was giving me some amazing relationship advice. I'm like, why did I not have your self esteem? She goes, Vaz, if a guy is like making you do all the work, like why are you even like dealing? with it i'm like i love you like my little cousin yes has so much self-esteem and i go i didn't have that at her age me either i, I no. think that the like the conversations that they see on tiktok or wherever are actually good yeah. i like i really do because my kids too they have like much better self-esteem and attitudes boundaries. than i did and I, boundary yeah. oh my god yes yeah big time and they're way more willing to voice it so i don't know maybe it's like how people are raised from other generations yeah. i don't know but anyway it's pretty awesome to see but I think that's amazing if you encourage them because I can't imagine, like, you would be an amazing mom to have, right? Because you are all about the voice and you want your girls and, and all, all your kids, you know, to, to use their voice. They're really They're quite loud. You. Yeah. They're quite loud. So maybe we need to write the next book. <laughs> just say STFU. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> We're know, not right? saying it out loud. We're just. One keep... is like go, going to college now for vocal performance. So, I mean, oh like. Oh my God. That's a, she's a singer? Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Is it the, oh, the oldest one? The oldest one? one, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, I know. Got a new yeah. tea tripping that's amazing yeah okay back to book back to book uh speaking of this kind of thing Mm -hmm. and one of your tips that i liked yeah or no this isn't in the tips and practices it's just top three self-soothing yes talk out loud to yourself the way you would with someone you love or what god would say i Mm -hmm. think we can tack on thank you and that we talked about in the other episode too i like thinking of yourself as a child or keeping a picture of yourself Mm -hmm. around as a child which i wanted to just highlight again because that's uh, such a good tactic Mm -hmm. and um i even will keep pictures of my kids around and think what would i want them to say to themselves uh wear something cozy and soft i'm all day at that all day so all day cozy vibes (laughs) Dude, I have a robe for you. Really? Yeah. Okay. Spirit hoods. Okay. Oh my God. It's literally like cl- clouds. I don't have a robe. Like my sister bought me one from the brand Parachute, which I love mm. like when I'm doing facials or, you know, just like putting oil in my hair and I just need something. I have some silk robes from Amazon that are great, yeah. but I don't have what I think you're talking about. An orgasm wrapped around your body. I basically. don't have an orgasm That's wrapped around my body. No. That you fantasize about when you're out and you're like, God, if only I had my robe on. See, I need mm-hmm. that kind of robe. Like, I need to be thinking about this robe when I'm out. Uh, that's what yeah, I do. That's what I, I need this robe. And Justin's learned. I'll be like, what am I thinking about? And he's like, your robe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Immerse yourself in warm water. An excellent way. Yeah. And you can even talk stuff into that water. You didn't mention that, but, um, or maybe you did. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't. I said to notice, paste. I said to notice <clears throat> the voices in your head that tell you this is a dumb idea. Why are we taking this time to go take a bath? I remember I was very. Really? Mm. I was resistant to taking baths because I thought they took too much time. They talked. Mm. They took too much time. I got, I'm a shower girl. Get in, get out. And now I have for my, what? Yeah, just like yeah. What's the point? Why am I doing this? Yeah, like why am I soaking and sitting in this water? And then I actually started to, and I was like, this is really good. So I actually dedicated my master bathroom just to be for like I did more spa vibes, mm-hmm. and I have a second bathroom is just for shower. And I really enjoy this giving myself that pause because if we're anything alike Amy we can keep going and going like I can work I know how to work I'm like a machine but I've had to learn how to allow myself to relax hard yeah me too and even just like washing my energy is like a huge one for Mm -hmm. me because I'll keep going going and won't even realize that I'm carrying stuff around and like I'm not feeling my best Mm -hmm. and then why don't I just take the time to get some hot water, even if it's a bath or a shower, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, uh, allowing yourself to aside. soak. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I need to do it. All right. So one of the other things that interested me in the book mm-hmm. is you mentioned emotional perfectionism. Oh yes. This is my favorite. I'm so glad you picked this. Dude, I'd never even heard of that. Yeah. Annie Hickox. And called- you said you hadn't heard of it either, I think. Yeah, I hadn't heard of it, but then yeah. I heard the term, Annie mm-hmm. Hickox, Dr. Annie Hickox. Oh. And I said, mm-hmm. I'm uh, emotional. <laughs> I have emotions. And I'm also a recovering perfectionist. I love... Same. It is... Some emotions are some emotions are okay to share. Some emotions are not. You have tolerance for some emotions <clears throat> and not for others. For me, I, there are certain emotions that I allow people to see. They're acceptable. They're okay. I don't allow a lot of people to see my anger. I also don't allow. Me either. I mm-hmm. can. I I lose my shit. It is my anger is so big that there are only maybe three people 
that can see my anger. Well, I bet you can get angry. Oh. I got, I got arrested <laughs> I think for you just a, channeled something there. I got arrested for assault in 2017. Wow. I can get Is angry. Is there cocaine involved? Uh, it was a come down. It, it was oh, like coming down from Benzos. Shit. From Benzos. Yeah. The next day. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, you know what? I had to, I had to manage my anger. I had to learn yeah, right, how to manage right. my anger. So <laughs> I will never let anyone ha- have that much control over me wow. ever again. It was a, it, yeah. I mean, I, it, I will never forget the day it happened. I will never forget how time slowed down when I got arrested. I will never forget how much relief I felt because the chaos stopped when I got arrested. Yeah, it was awful because I obviously had to call my parents. Like, it was a whole thing. I don't know if you've ever spent a night in jail. It's very cold. I have not. It is very cold. Knock on wood. wood. It is very scary. And me as just like a 30-something year old, like, what am I doing here? But anyway, my point is, anger is one of those things that I don't allow a lot Mm -hmm. of people to see. I don't think think it's... Not everyone has the right or I'm not not everyone deserves to come in and and, and witness all of that you know there are only few people that I feel very safe with it be my therapist my sister and maybe one or two really good friends who have seen me angry really angry wow and they don't get afraid of me because most people are afraid of certain emotions they're afraid if I show this emotion you're gonna think this so I can't show this so this is not about showing all your emotions to every single person but find people that you feel safe with but mostly be safe with yourself feel safe mm-hmm. with you what emotions do you not even allow yourself to really sit with because oh this feels shamey this feels judgy you know for me if financially uh two years ago it was not a very good year for me it was, it was i was going through a lot i was going through a lot and i wouldn't ever let anybody know that i'm financially struggling i will because i grew up in a culture we grew up in a culture where status matters how much money in the bank matters, where you go to school matters. And, you know, and I felt ashamed. Like, oh, I got everything growing up as a kid. Money was never an issue. Education, I I went to the best schools and I felt a lot of shame around my financial situation. And I finally told a good friend of mine Mm -hmm. and that really helped. Just saying it to her, releasing it really helped me because she actually helped me brainstorm some stuff. She helped kind of pour some life back into me. And I was like, you know what? We're going to be okay. We're going to get through this. I wouldn't even think to put that in the category of emotional perfectionism. Yeah, because but it, that is, huh? Yeah, because for me it felt weak. <clears throat> I felt I don't like people like like so in the book Oh, I can relate. So it's a weakness for thing. For sure. Yes. Yeah, so for me it's like and what I want everyone to take away from this part of the book is like where are you hiding? Where what what do you hide? Because eat, listen, you don't have to say it to anyone else, but at least you got to be honest with yourself. This book is about being honest with yourself. Because when you're honest with yourself, guess what? You are going to be honest with others. When you're Big honest time. with yourself and you're not shaming yourself, you're not going to be ashamed to say it to somebody else. The shame comes up because you're shaming yourself. Like mm-hmm. people can't shame you without your permission. Big you know, time, they totally. Yeah, if totally. I'm not ashamed about something, like my mom will sometimes like if I if I wear something, let's say, just say say I'm showing a little cleavage, okay? Because mm-hmm. I grew up in a very modest, conservative household. She will give me a look. Like, what's that? She'll like, look look at me. She'll <laughs> give me that look. And I know what she's like, doing. That's my cleavage, Yeah, babe. that's my cleavage. <laughs> and you know, it's taken a while, but that one look can set me off. I know exactly what that looks like. It's the disapproving look, you uh-huh. little slut. You little slut. Why are you showing your cleavage? Mm-hmm. I mean, so she's not used the word slut. She has said it in our language. And she has said oh. it. Porikinaya. Porikinaya basically means like a streetwalker. You look like a streetwalker. Wow. So she'll give me that look, even to this day, because I'll Zoom her or I'll FaceTime her because my parents aren't here. And it still hurts to get that look. That part of me, that young part of me feels like, oh, mom, just, but the 40 year old me, it's like, no, let, let her look at me all she wants. You know? You don't show up in a different top? No, I will not. Good for you. No, I will not. Why? Yeah. yeah. If I can't stand face to face with the person in my life who I feel has injected the most amount of shame and self hatred in me, then I can't stand in front of anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about parts of you that are hiding. And then let's see, you said that finding parts of you that are hiding and then something about how that equals, where is it? <clears throat> Sorry. I, I cut and pasted a bunch of notes in here. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, I think that it went with this other thing that you said about curiosity about yourself mm-hmm. is freedom. Mm-hmm. So finding those, I actually, yeah, I completely get this with what we're talking about, mm-hmm. like finding what's hidden 
and f- that being freeing, like you were just saying, you, no one can shame you. It's, a, it's that same thing, right? So one of the things you and I, we, <clears throat> I don't know if you remember this, but I remember this conversation when you and I went to the book launch party. We went to Dave Asprey's book yeah, launch party. Yeah, we, we did. We hung out in the car a little bit and we yeah. were talking. Pouring down rain. Pouring down. It was raining mud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> funny. You're funny. It was. So you really helped me feel like, um, like want to waken up that sexier part of me. I think you're one of the sexiest women ever. That you, is so sweet. No, I, no, I, 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 and I've told you this. I've told you, yes. I think you're extremely sexy. I love the way that you dress. I love the way you put like attention to detail. I love the way that you're, you're still very comfortable, but it's like, it's still sexy. So like I Thank bought you. more banties because of you, because I love your, I bought like a Tupac one. I bought a sublime banty because it's like you inspired that in awesome. me me and so that part of myself you've you've helped waken that up in me i call her vixen vasavi <gasps> she got a v name just like of vulnerable course. vasavi vicious and... vasavi vigilant vasavi <laughs> vocal vasavi vixen Va- vixen vasavi has been dormant for a while so she I'm, was a hidden part she, yeah but well, she is there <laughs> not is, anymore no, she, yeah she was hidden but not anymore yeah yes she's, yeah she's coming back out again obviously i'm not gonna just come back be a vixen with every single person that i meet but like with the right person i will show my Vixen, mm-hmm. my, big, my so uh, you you have a um you have a lot to do with that. You thank you, my friend Nita. Also, you know Nita yes. very well. Yeah, she's been a huge part of that too. She's like, come on, girl, I'm calling you forward. Like, let's yeah. stop. Let's put some effort into what we look like. You don't need to keep hiding. Like, let's live our life. Well, out. plus like, when yeah. we talked about that too, you were like, oh, do I need to dress like this? Yep. And I was like, no, you need to find out what you feel sexy in. That's exactly right. That's the trick. So right? this is this is what I did. You'd be so proud. I went to Target. Uh, I'm already went, proud. I, I went to Target. <laughs> I went to Target because they had like a bunch of stuff. And I just saw stuff and I was like, ooh, I love this monochromatic look. Oh, and I just started looking oh, at Oh, I saw you in one of those. Yeah, it was pink. It was pink. Yes. The pink. And I, and I saw like, that. Here for it. Thank you so much. Because so I tried it on and mm. I'm like, huh, it's not skin tight. It's not what I doesn't have to be skin exactly. tight. Exactly. And I was like, but I feel so good in it. Yeah. Like, That's what matters. And you really helped me with that. Cause we did I did ask you that. I was like, does it I had this idea of what sexy for me was based on what exes have told me, what media has told me. Like, mm-hmm. if you don't dress like this or if you don't show this, you're not sexy. But it's like, I feel the sexiest when I'm comfortable. Me too, actually, more than yeah. ever now. So I need stretchy fabrics too if I'm really yeah. some tight. But uh, but yeah, like I was just thinking, I have like this romper and yeah. uh, it's like, um, you know, like spaghetti, like smaller straps, but then it's like loose fitting yeah. and like pants, whatever. But I remember seeing, uh, Aubrey Marcus's wife, Ilana in one, one day and the way she was wearing it and stuff. And I was like, Oh yeah, Yeah. she looked so hot. And I was like, I'm so here for that. And so like in those, I'll wear like a little top underneath whatever. And I'd like feel sexy. Yeah, It doesn't have to be, it just like, it's like the feeling. Cause then you're going to put that vibe out. Yeah. People, people have been noticing. They've been noticing oh, even with my nice. monochromatic Target little thing. And I was like, that's another, it. that's another thing. I was like, so what if it's from Target? Like, I know how to dress stuff up. I know mm-hmm. how to. So just all these things in my. Oh, yeah. So what if it's from Target? Oh, my God. Yes. yes. You. Go, I mean, honestly, Amazon, you have to go. Target. You yeah. have to go because I mean, Amazon, Target. All, <laughs> and just being honest with myself, it's like, no, I am not the kind of person that's ever going to spend six to seven hundred dollars on a pair of shoes. I'm not going to do that. Like that's me. Never pers- say never. Never say never. In this mm-hmm. season of my life, I am not that person. Okay. That doesn't mean down the road <laughs> I'm not. But in this season, I'm trying to find what makes me feel good when I when I put it on. And you've inspired me a lot. Yay! Yeah. Good. Yeah. What do you say when you put those on? Are you talking to yourself? <gasps> oh my god. So <laughs> if only if only people could hear me. When only people could, I'm like, please just record it sometime I, and share it. You I should. Mean, it's, I'm like, God, you look good. Look at you. You don't. Even, I'm like, look at your skin. Look at your hair. I'm like, God damn it, you look good. Like I will just. You're gonna share vulnerable vixen. Vulnerable vixen. Vulnerable vixen. That's what you're gonna do. So like. vulnerable vixen. <laughs> vulnerable vixen is. The vulnerable part is to let people see that that's how I really talk to that's myself. That's what I mean. I think it's, I mean, I look, I'm in vixen mode and I'm being vulnerable by showing it to you. So yeah, here you go. That's, I'm going to, I'm going to record that next time. I think you should. I think that's inspiring. Like, you know, like I think men do it all this time. You my, know? I watched my dad doing it grow, growing up. I write, yeah, you wrote that in here. I said, I used to watch my father put on his three piece suit, comb his hair with his pink comb. And he'd say, I'm so handsome. Aren't I so handsome? He's like, yeah, and, and, they're like, I'm killing it yeah. today. He would literally say that to himself. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And so my dad would say to me, if you cannot look at yourself in the mirror and say that to yourself, we got a problem. Yeah. So he would say that to me. So that's why mirror work is so huh. important to me. 
Maybe that was planted in your subconscious. It somewhere. really was from a very young age. He, my dad talked out loud to himself. He would play tennis or he'd be doing so. He'd be cooking in the kitchen. His name is Shanti. And he goes, come on, Shanti. He'd like talk to himself. as mm-hmm. I heard my father speak to himself and, and, and refer to himself in his first name. So that was like not weird for me growing up. Do you up. think men do that more than women? I think it's totally more acceptable for men to do that. Cause it's just like team sports and all that shit. It's like, they're always cheering each other on. And yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Hmm. Could be like an athletic thing. I don't know, but I, I don't think uh, definitely women do not do it as much as they should because then you're considered arrogant. I mean, even from a young age, I mean, I was told not to, you know, don't take away her shine basically in, in, in not those exact words, but it's like, let her have her moment. You don't, I mean, even at birthday parties, even at my own birthday party, it's like receiving gifts. It's like, yeah, it wasn't what it was always because I think my parents, what they never wanted was anyone to come to our house and feel rejected. Um, I get it. They both grew up in homes that maybe they did not feel very much at home, but what they ended up doing was creating within my sister and I to always put other people first, their happiness, their this. And like, what about us? And so when it comes to me celebrating, it's like, Oh, how do I do that? So now that's why, you know, just to close the loop on the original thing we started talking about, the callback with being okay with, you read my mind. Yeah. Being okay. You with read ce- my yeah. mind. Yeah. Being okay Call with celebrating. Back. Being okay with celebrating, celebrating and I'm not better than you. I'm not better like, than you. I'm you're not no. better than me or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's what it is. That, well, that's the foundation of this like feeling like, oh God, they're going to think that, you know, I think I'm better than you. It's, it's, isn't it so interesting? It's like when you, it's either I suck or, or when you have accomplished something, I don't want you to think I'm better than you. So it's like, when do we actually ever get to win? When do we actually ever get to be proud of ourselves? Say that one more time. So it's interesting because... Before, for me, it was, I'm not worthy enough, right? That was the narrative. And now that I've written this book, something that I should be proud of, the narrative is, well, I don't want people to think, I think I'm better than them. So it's like, when do we ever actually get to win? We don't, I'm like, can I, can I please live? Like, that's how I'm speaking to myself in these days. It's like, Voss, none of that. No. I'm going to let myself win. I'm going to let myself win. I'm going to let myself feel good. I'm going to let myself like receive the praise. I'm going to allow myself to praise myself. My issue is not really... (laughs) myself I don't have an issue with praising myself it's receiving it from other people it's very mm-hmm. hard for me mm-hmm. I, I I brush it off and I don't do it purposely so many people do I it just, don't you tell people things all the time and they brush it off they just brush it off and I'm like <clears throat> it no, bothers yeah. me yeah, mm-hmm. yeah because I have some friends or some people like I know, I've seen in the spiritual community mm-hmm. and I would say like oh my gosh you look so beautiful yeah. and they'd say it's just a reflection of you and I'm like oh I don't like that. Yeah. No, I'm really telling you. Yeah. Like it feels like a deflection. You yeah. know, it feels like a way of like bypassing the fact that you don't want to receive that, yes. you know? Yes. 100%. And, and so it's real easy to do. And I just, I was reading something. I don't know what. Mm-hmm. And one of the 10 <laughs> books that I read all the time. And it was saying, like reframing receiving as giving. Yeah. And it was saying that, your receiving is actually a gift to me. So in that situation that I just described, like instead of them saying like, it's a reflection of you, I would say like, Oh, I would, I would see myself as giving you the gift of receiving that. I would be like, Oh, you know, thank you. You know? And, and, and it is like almost a treatment of respect too. Like, I trust your opinion. Well, someone has just given you this gift. I am sexy. No. Yeah. No, but it's it's true. Someone though. has given you someone this has gift. given you this gift, and I'm like, oh no, but it's just about you. It, it it's you're literally taking it and you're just kind of throwing it back in the person's face. Yeah. These days, when someone compliments, you know, like my new outfits, my fit, as my 23 year old <laughs> neighbor would say, it's, it's my right. fit. I I get really excited. I go, thank you so much, because I know like I've been putting attention to how I'm dressing, what I'm wearing, and it's been feeling good. So no, you I, look super cute. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, you look great. Thank you. Uh, I was impressed. You walked up, and I was like, oh yeah, she's showing up. Yes, I'm in workout pants, but it's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I want a decent top. Yes. Uh, no, but you're right. You're right. So that is a good space. Mm-hmm. So you're already saying like, what do you say? What are you gonna say? I I am able to receive. I reframe receiving as a gift. Re- receiving is a gift. Like, what do you? What do you? What does that look like? What would God say to you? Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. right. Why can't we you. just say thank you? Thank you for We this. can. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, I read somewhere the other day something about, like, even if you just say thank you, that's the most powerful prayer. 
And that's not, just thank you. And not even, you know, if you're giving me a compliment, thank you. And you're blah, 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 blah. Right. Like having, <laughs> it's still doing the same thing. I think we have to just learn like, thank you is a, is a, is a full sentence. Just like no is a full sentence. You can say thank you. And that's it. When I would receive compliments, I would, I would, I would do what, like you said, those people in the, some of the people in the spiritual community, I would say, you see it. <laughs> that's like, oh I have said it. I said, that's because, oh, what you see in me, you see it in yourself. It's the same thing. Just said a different way. Same thing. Because it felt, I felt bad that this person is giving me a compliment. And then in my mind, it's like, but do you know that you're also the same? But it's like, no, Vasavi, in that moment, just receive the compliment. It's not always about- Sometimes you don't have a compliment ready to go for the person. I mean, like I could sit there and look and be like, your hair looks gorgeous. You smell amazing. Your smile is beautiful. You know, but like sometimes you're just like caught off guard or whatever. And then it's not genuine. And now you're, you know (laughs) what I mean? So just say thank you. I think, yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. So back to the book. Yeah. Uh, We're at about an hour right now. So let's talk about, um, you sent me a few questions, which I appreciate. I like that. Um, Let's say, have you had people come to you and say, or your coaching clients, this has transformed my life. And yeah. like, what does that look like? Cause it's certainly, I mean, I may not have learned it from you. I may have naturally fallen into mm-hmm. it, but it certainly does, uh, has transformed mine. So what, uh, what is the most powerful, you know, oh, wish- maybe not the most powerful transformation yeah. story, but what powerful transformations have you experienced and you've seen? So with my clients, so I have one client that I've worked with for over a year and a half and he openly talks about this. So I'm not, you know, disclosing his stuff. And he, even cre- he created a one man show around his <laughs> cool. So he came out to his family when he was 10 years old and his family basically said to him, maybe you just think boys are handsome. And so for basically eight years of his life, he was shut off from his from, from his sexuality, being gay. Like he knew he was gay at 10. He didn't know what that looked like, but he felt, he, he, he describes it as gay energy. He goes, I had gay energy. He's like, I just, <laughs> I knew that I was gay. And I went to my parents and I said, I like boys. And they said to him, maybe you just think they're handsome. So we worked together for over a year and a half. He's still in my say it out loud. He, we, we were, he was a one-on-one client and then he converted into the group. Mm-hmm. Um, but the most powerful thing about Jason is that he's been able to talk to these different parts of himself and what he refers to as his queer side. His queer side is now coming out. He is now like he's starting to build a relationship with the queer side of himself and feel connected with that 10 year old boy that knew that he was gay. He was, he knew he was gay at 10 years old, yeah. but then he kind of closeted that he came out of the closet and then he put himself back in the closet. Yep. Imagine that. So I'm so proud of him. He just performed his one man show in New York city. I went to go see him. He performed what? it in San Francisco. Then he brought it to New York city. So for oh when God. I have chills, that's so cool. When you take your pain and you turn it into art, that for me is the ultimate transformation. Totally. You take your pain. And, and he you... is saying some shit out loud. Yeah. Yeah. And his parents know that he's doing the show and everything. What's it called? Maybe you just think they're handsome. Oh, mm-hmm. maybe you, th- oh, maybe you think they're handsome. Yeah. That's the name of it. Oh my God. Yes. That gave me chills. Yeah. So that Jason for me is like the walking embodiment of learning to talk and respond back to the parts of yourself. He, he does that. A lot. You know, what's interesting about that too, is that his natural inclination mm-hmm. was to say it out loud to his parents. Yeah. And then someone tells you, no, that's not true. Or they reject you. And then you, and and that's who the book is for, is for people who number one, have never been given a space to say it out loud. Mm -hmm. Number two, you did say it out loud, but then you were made fun of for being too much or being too fiery or being too, 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 whatever. And so, you know, there's parts of you that have been stifled there. Where's like Vixen Vasavi, where is she or Vivacious Vasavi? You know, (laughs) these parts of us, these vibrant parts of ourselves, where did they go? So that's also who the book is for anyone who has suppressed different parts of themselves. Those parts of themselves have voices that also want to come out. You know, like I don't just have one voice, right? I talk to with different people, different situations, different parts of me come out, you know, but it's, it's all still the same person, but they're all healthier parts of my, me now. They're not speaking from a wounded place, a place of needing validation. It's a healthy part of us. So what I hope ultimately in my book is that everyone sees that every single part of them is worthy of love. Every single part of them, even the most flawed parts of you, even the most broken parts of you. And I say that in quotes because none of that is true. You're not broken, none of that, but you may feel it. But even those parts of you that you think are dirty, bad, or ugly or whatever, even that part of you needs love. A hundred percent. Yeah. 
I liked that soapbox. Thank you. Thank that was you. great. Thank you. <clears throat> you answered like 10 of these okay, questions. I, <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. And uh, usually I say, what do you want to say in wrapping up? But I think that might have been it. Do you have anything you want to add or anything we missed that you really want to talk about today? Um, no, I, you know, I wanted to read one thing from my... Yes, please, from your actual hard copy. I wanted to read for just the acknowledgement section. Um, I wrote... Uh, So, okay, let me just read it. So, um, to my late uncle, Lakshmi Kumar, who took his life, I wish you had known how to talk to the voices in your head. Maybe then you would still be alive. Your suicide showed me what would happen if I didn't learn how to be kinder to myself. Your death saved my life. I will honor the life that you could have lived by continuing to share your story. Man, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, did not mean to end with suicide. How old was he? He was 30. 30. Yeah, my father. Um, How old were you? 10. So, so I knew at uh, the age of 10, uh, my dad told me like maybe a year later at 11 or 11 or 12 years old how my uncle died. He had hung himself. And at that point, you know, and then so what, eight years later, nine, seven years later, I'm diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I really do feel that I have been the one to break the curse in our family, the cycle of, you know, my uncle in India, you know, he didn't get the help he needed. He was kind of seen as the the runt of the family and he took his life and i don't think anyone should have to die i don't either i don't think i think if our mind is a safer place and a kinder place uh we will realize you know that voice that tells us you're better off dead you know it won't be the loudest one maybe you'll have another voice that you can tap into that says no you actually do matter you know but most people don't have that and those are the people that take their own lives so i'm not promising this book will help stop suicide or anything i would never make that claim but i do believe that if had my uncle known how to talk to himself if he was supported you'd still be alive today. No one. It's the right direction. Yeah, it's the right direction. Thank <laughs> you, know, you for saying that. It's yeah. the right direction away yeah. from that. Yeah. It's a healthier direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm speaking from experience too. Yeah. Not only from what I've learned from your book, which I really did enjoy. Thank you. Truly everything about it and the truth in it. And, and, but you know, from my own practice, I don't want anybody to think like I've got it all figured out because I have moments where I have had that thought. Yeah. You know, and like, you know, sometimes I think like through my life, like having kids saves me, you know, like, okay, I can't do that to them, you know, but I mean, like we have dark thoughts, thoughts go south fast. So how Mm -hmm. can we find the practices that we need to get into a better state? I'm hoping that if someone reads this and they have a thought that says you'd be better off dead that they will be able to access another voice inside their head that says, no, you should live. Because I was thinking about, and I know we're wrapping up, but I just wanted to say this. No, like, we got time. We're good. Well, um, when I when I came out of rehab the second time, it felt, it was awful, right? My, I was 37. My mother was paying my bills. She didn't want me to work. She goes, I need you to work on loving yourself. I don't need you out there working right now. All you care about is making money. She goes, and then, and, and then you just completely neglect you. So my, I, I, I said to my mom, give me six months. I'll get back on my feet. Okay. It took me seven. So, um, so, so that was fine. But during those times, it was really hard. I would literally, I was so depressed. I felt like such a loser and I would look up at the fan. I'm not kidding. And I'd be like, well, I could just go to Lowe's. I can get a nice piece of rope. I would die. No one would even, I mean, like the voice would tell me exactly how to do it. And I would say that out loud. I'd be literally by myself in the same house that I live now. Just go do this and just go do that. And then I'd call my mom up. She wouldn't answer because she'd be busy. And then I'd say to myself, no, you're going to get through this. What do you need to do right now? Okay, get some water. Okay, go. Let's go get some water. Okay, great. Let's go for a walk. Okay, let's go for a walk. So I, at least I have, you know, also I've, I've been in therapy since I was 12. I had access to mental health support from a young age. Many people do not have access. So if there's anything that I can offer is, you know, be kind, be kind to yourself inside your head because you're with you always. Mm-hmm. And your book is very accessible. Thank you. You know? Yeah. It's easy. You don't need a journal. You literally just need to answer these questions out loud and respond respond back. You don't even need a journal, you know? Well, how can everybody get it? They can, well, it's available everywhere, or you can go to vasavikumar.com forward slash order the book. And we also have a bunch of bonuses and there's a virtual book club in June. So everyone who pre-orders the book, we will be going through this in June. A virtual book club in June. Yeah, four Wednesdays in June, June 7th, 14th, 21, 21 and 28. We're doing three chapters a week. 
And people will read the chapters and then come together and talk about yeah. it on Zoom or something yeah. with you leading? Yeah. Well, cool. Here's the thing. In my groups, I actually don't talk a lot. I don't. I don't oh, good. I have no Even prob- better. I have no problem saying it out loud. It's my people who come to me that they need to say it out loud. So our book club will be us talking about it. Everyone will be a share. And I'm just asking the questions and you talk. Dude, those are going to be long meetings. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. people are like yeah. three, three chapters. Yeah. So we, well, you know, each you know? chapter, it, it, it'll flow wonderfully. It's not, you know, read the I book. I didn't mean like it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but, you know but what I mean? Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. Like, because there's so much packed in those, yeah. like, you know, yeah. I feel like. I just didn't want to leave my readers hanging. You know, most people, they buy the book and then that it's like, you know, I want people. <coughs> well, it's to... not like it's a novel yeah. you know, or something. So that's right. Yes. No, you're not leaving them hanging. That's so cool. Yeah. Good. Well, I will put links to all that in the Thank show you. notes. Thank you. And then everyone can access it, order the book and have plenty of time. Thank you. Because this is coming out like right when it comes out. Yeah. Uh-huh. May 16th. <gasps> Thank you. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I love you Me and too. I'm happy to support you and like how you're showing up Thanks. and you're saying it all out loud yes. and you're experiencing a new level of growth. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I love having these conversations with you. And you're really funny. You know this already, but you're very funny. Thanks. It's always you're great funny. To, yeah. It's always great talking to you. I like having a good time. Yeah. Like if we can't laugh, it's like, it's just yeah, I, life already. And listen, these conversations, <laughs> these conversations get really heavy and it's like, man, I need some like levity. Levity. Like, yeah, levity, <laughs> like that's the season of my life is levity. It's like, I can't do, <clears throat> I can't do heavy anymore. I'm done. I, can't. I mean, you know, if you can't lighten it, it's like, gosh, it's just too heavy. It's like, like I, I feel like I've gone through the heaviest periods of my life. And now it's like, if something comes, I take it in stride. Okay. Like I didn't think I was going to get my audiobook finished last week. Cause they had some issues at the studio. I was like, all right, worst case scenario. I mean, really comes out the next yeah, week. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Work, well, yeah, worst case scenario. I'm like, all right, play the tape out. No big deal. I'll survive. <laughs> That's everything for me is We'll play the tape out. Will I still be alive? Okay, great. No problem. That's right. It's not a huge crisis. I'm not going to make a big deal. No. Good. Not a big deal. Yeah. Good. You know, that sounds like a real even mood and that's where it's at. Yes. You know, my, I've been just trying to level out the moods yeah. and, and it feels good. Then you're just like, this is life. Life. This is what comes, you know, things happen. Yes. Things happen. Things happen. Yes. Say it out loud. Get, say, <laughs> say it out, it out loud. loud. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself what you need and keep it moving. Keep, <laughs> keep it moving. <laughs> Yes. Keep it moving. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I love you so Thank you. much. I love you too. Thank you Thank for you. showing up today. Thank you for showing me. up, showing out, bringing yeah. the fit. Yeah. All of it. Looking so good. Yes. And- Amy approved. Hashtag Amy approved. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes. Hashtag Amy approved. Yes. Thank you so Thank much, you. boss. I love you. Love you too. Be sure and order the book. It is in the show notes and you can sign up for the virtual book club, which sounds like a great way to get, it's free, right? Or yeah. is it pay? It's oh gift. my gosh, it's, it's free. Gift, yeah. Okay. It's a free, it's a gift with the book. So do it on our website. That's the link I'm going to put. And then you can sign up for this extra. That's the book club, which what a bonus, because then you're getting basically like extra free coaching, mm-hmm. you know, uh, which we just did right here too. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for being here. Remember to say some things out loud to a friend right? And like, maybe share this episode. Y'all know I sound like a broken record because I say this all the time, but like share it with a friend. That's when we start to talk about something in Mm -hmm. here. That's when we start to have the conversations. Maybe you feel shame around your past, maybe your parents, maybe, you know, sexual stuff. Maybe it's money. I don't know. There's probably something and you could find a way to say it out loud to a friend. And that's where like magic starts to happen. Like that's where we reclaim our power. That's Mm -hmm. where we feel stronger. And that's where we like embrace life even more and ultimately get happier, which is the point, right? To even out, to feel good, to have awareness, all that stuff. So anyway, I'm rambling now, but thank you, Voss. And thank you to you for showing up. Share it with a friend, sign up for the newsletter, rate, review, subscribe, all the things. things. It helps the show grow. And I can't even tell you how grateful I am. Like it's just beyond. So thank you. I'm saying thank you to you. Receive that. (laughs) And I love you so much till next time. This has been the Amy Edwards show from overcome studios. Remember to rate review and subscribe. And thank you so much for being here. Sign up for our newsletter at amyedwards.com.